Hi, I'm Shannon, owner of Pahrump Early Learning Academy, where we are more than just childcare. Hi, I'm Monique Mitchell with KPVM Television. My children attend Pella and they love it. The curriculum they have is pretty amazing and my children learn what they need at their level. Not only are the children learning, they're having fun and that's what matters. I like Pella. They help you with your homework and it's fun. Give us a call today to tour our facility at 751-5335. Common names such 
such as John White, and generally asks for the funds to be sent in the form of a prepaid debit or wire transfer. Residents should be aware that legitimate contact from the Internal Revenue Service comes in the form of mail, not telephone contact. Also keep in mind that the IRS does not generally ask for all transactions to be in the form of a money order or a debit card. They usually ask for a check. Please call the Nye County Sheriff's Office for more information at 751-7000. We'll be back right after this break. This portion of the news is brought to you by the United Nations of Las Vegas. By the way, to me, the West Coast is Chairman Harley Calkin spoke to News 46 about the restraining order placed on them regarding contractual agreements. Uh, the county commissioners uh, Zoom and myself and other town board members and staff talk about the terms of town staff because I'm sure of their future. The people of Carlton voted to eliminate the elected town board. That's all. The town board form of government still stands, which means it's business as usual other than who makes the final decision, which from January 6th will be the commissioners. But the commissioners do have some other options, and the staff is very unsure of their future. Uh, last night's town board member uh, meeting, excuse me, <laughs> town board meeting last night, uh, some people got really upset. Mm -hmm. there, there were some items, some housekeeping items that you had on the agenda that uh, were halted to as well? Oh, yes, that's just part of this picture. So the, the not having any reply from the county commissioners you know, to the town staff to let them know what their future is. Uh, we decided that we would try to do some things. To, uh, part of it's housekeeping. Uh, we wanted all the contracts to, for our town staff to be uh, uniform. Uh, there was a disparity in that the men had contracts, the department heads, and the women didn't. That's not very nice. So we wanted to correct all those things. And plus, we wanted to protect their future. So uh, we were looking to take the contracts into next year. And then the fire chief's contracts expired uh, uh, 2012. It wasn't renewed, and you guys noticed that it hadn't been renewed and that uh, you wanted to extend it, as well as uh, Susan Holacek and uh, a couple other people, human resources. Yeah, as I said, the, the women didn't have any contracts. The men did. And the way the contracts are, are written, that's kind of up to uh, inter interpretation, I believe, very strongly in court. They would all uphold that if you – because they have some phrases in there that say that uh, you can't unduly withhold renewing the contract. So in other words, if you take no action whatsoever, I believe it would hold up in court that they still have a contract. So I believe they're still valid. And, and we were just looking to extend the period of time of when they're valid so to protect their, their future employment, which also means that all the staff would be protected and honorable. And then uh, Judge Kim Walker put a hold on it. What's that mean um, that uh, you guys can't take care of this? and? I can't have uh, Michigan review it or what? The county asked for, Brendan Kunze asked for, the, to stop the town board from making any decisions, any contractual decisions that would go into next year. Um, the court simply ordered that we cannot make any decisions to extend personnel contracts, but any other contracts we still can. So that was a 15-day restraining order. And a job fair was held Friday at Night Communities Coalition. A quarterly job fair was held at Nye Communities Coalition on the corner of West and Wilson Street. In attendance were representatives from Nye County Emergency Services, Retired Senior Volunteer Program, DeVry University, and Health and Human Services, and many more. We spoke to Tim Wiggers recently about the job fair. It's a great chance to meet a number of job seekers all at the same time in a con concise three-hour event. If you are an employer or a job seeker and would like to attend the next job fair, which will be held in November, you can give Nye Communities Coalition a phone call at 727-9970. This is Deanne O'Donnell for News 46. Janie Kilgore invited the community down to her salon called the New Outer U last night on the corner of Pahrump Valley Boulevard and Calvada. We were having a uh, wine, cheese, and chocolate tasting event. I wanted to bring together uh, more businesses in Pahrump, and um, that, so that was a basic idea. Uh, Jack Sanders is here from the winery, and then we've got Karen's Eye Candy next door. She's having the cheese event, and of course I'm going to be in charge of the chocolate. 
And so you have all different types of services that you offer here at this uh, salon. Yes, uh, our biggest uh, claim to fame is uh, very creative hairstyles, very creative hair color, and of course the nail art is amazing. Uh, it's a, almost a one-of-a-kind nail art. The, both of the nail artists that we have here will always create anything that you want or let them do their own thing, and you'll always be very happy with the nail art. And so all different types of services, including? Uh, well, we just have the uh, mobile massage therapist. She just started with us uh, today, as a matter of fact. And we offer uh, eyebrow waxing, uh, makeup. Uh, we do have a makeup artist here. And we uh, sell a lot of hair products as well. You're located on the corner of Front Valley Boulevard and Calvada at 1971 Front Valley Boulevard. What's your hours of operation? Uh, 10 o'clock in the morning until 6 in the evening. And, but anybody will take up there. Everybody here is an independent contractor, so they will uh, always do appointments to cater to their customers' needs. What's the phone number? 751 1116. We'll be right back after this break. In July, 15,441 initial claims for unemployment insurance were filed in Nevada, down 13% compared to July of 2013, and close to the average decline of 16% seen in January through June. Initial claims have fallen compared to the previous year for 20 straight months and in 53 in the past 56 months. With the worst case backlog of any state Supreme Court in the nation, Justice James Hardesty says it's time to end Nevada status as one of only 10 in the country with no appellate or intermediary court. Hardesty helped kick off a campaign Wednesday in support of a November ballot measure to create a state appeals court. The justice says approval of question one wouldn't cost taxpayers any money because the Supreme Court currently returns money to the state that it can't spend. Because all appeals from district court are funneled directly to the high court, its backlog has jumped from 1,550 cases in five years ago to more than 2,200 today. Hardesty says some child custody cases take up to four years to complete because of the overwhelming caseload. He says justice delayed is justice denied. Nevada business leaders want the legislature to consider holding a special session early next year to put together an incentive package to help lure Tesla Motors' $5 billion battery factory to the state. Nevada has a head start in the competition for the Giga factory after Tesla officials confirmed they have graded a dirt pad in place east in a place east of Sparks. But Tesla is keeping its option open with plans to break ground in Texas, California, Arizona, and New Mexico. A special session is the only way to legislate any package worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Southern Nevada home prices continued their steady climb in July, reaching $200,000 for the first time since August of 2008. The Greater Las Vegas Association of Realtors reported Friday that medium home prices ticked up a fraction of a percent since May and have risen more than 11 percent from July of 2013. The medium home prices are far below their June 2006 peak of $315,000. Area medium home prices bottomed out at $118,000 in January of 2000. The total number of single-family homes listed for sale on the association's multiple listing service in July was about 13,700. That was down just under 1% from more than 13,800 in June, and just under 3% from a year ago. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. That's your news across Nevada. Celine Dion has cleared her calendar of all performances, saying she needs to focus on her health, her husband's health, and raising their three young children. The superstar vocalist is canceling shows that were slated through March 22nd of 2015, including a tour of Asia planned for the fall and regular shows at the Coliseum at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. Dion's husband, Rene Angelil, had a cancerous tumor removed in December, and she said in a statement that the struggle with the disease has taken a toll on her family. Celine apologized to her fans. Show organizers say the singer also has not recovered from an illness that has inflamed her throat muscles and prevented performances in Las Vegas since July 29th. Fans who bought tickets for future shows are eligible for refunds. 
Actress Lauren Bacall, the husky-voiced Hollywood icon known for her sultry sensuality, has died. She was 89 years old. Bacall died in New York. Her international fame began before the backdrop of World War II in 1944 with her first film, To Have or Have Not, which she made with her future husband, Humphrey Bogart. They married in 1945, had two children, and went on to make more films together, including The Big Sleep in 1946, Dark Passage in 1947, and Key Largo in 1948. Bogart died in 1957. Pop singer Justin Bieber's guilty plea to charges of careless driving and resisting arrest puts an end to a legal saga that began seven months ago inside a rented Lamborghini at what police call a illegal drag race. The judge, who accepted Bieber's plea Wednesday, said it's time for the 20-year-old singer to stop his misbehavior, especially for his millions of young fans. The plea deal Bieber struck with prosecutor includes a 12-hour anger management course, a $50,000 charitable contribution already made to a local children's organization, and a $500 fine. The deal allows Bieber to avoid conviction under the driving under the influence and includes no jail time. Alcohol breath tests found Bieber's level below the 0.02 limit for underage drivers, but urine tests showed the presence of marijuana and the anti-anxiety drug Xanax in his system. In July, Bieber resolved another criminal case by pleading no contest to a misdemeanor vandalism charge for throwing eggs at a neighbor's house in Los Angeles. In that case, Bieber agreed to pay more than $80,000 in damages and meet a number of other conditions. Bieber also is charged in Toronto with assaulting a limousine driver in late December. His lawyers have said that he is not guilty in that case. Back in Miami, Bieber is being sued by a photographer who says he was roughed up while snapping pictures of the singer outside a recording studio. I'm Deanna O'Donnell at your entertainment this week. <laughs> Angela Miles retail sales are showing signs of slight weakness, and it's not helping that Macy's missed on earnings. The retailer has been unable to recoup losses from the first quarter when it was hit hard by bad weather. Americans are still falling for a scam. Last October, the IRS warned of con artists preying on taxpayers by impersonating IRS agents on the phone. Since then, 1,100 victims have been cheated out of a collective $5 million. FYI, if the IRS wants to get a hold of you, it starts with an official letter and not a threatening phone call. And attendance numbers are still plunging at SeaWorld. The theme park is lowering its profit potential for the year. SeaWorld was criticized for its treatment of orca whales in the film Blackfish. Park operators strongly denied the abuse allegations. The stock sank 32% on Wednesday. Tales and Animal Shelter held an adoption day at the Hub Bar on Bell Vista. Tales and Animal Control, who has taken over the Nye County Animal Shelter, held an adoption day at the Hub Bar and Grill on Bell Vista on Saturday morning. The event was very successful. Seven animals were adopted out to loving homes. The Nye County Animal Shelter is open six days a week. For more information, you can give them a call at 751-7020. They also have a Facebook page for Tales, and if you would like to see animals that they have available at this time. This is Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. When we come back from this break, we'll have your weather and some announcements.